Holland's Yori Van Hoof held the chip lead three-handed coming into the final day of the 2014 WSOP main event, but after losing some key pots he found himself as the short stack. In the end he ran ace-5 into ace-10 of Martin Jakobsen and was eliminated in third place, earning $3,807,753. Card Player TV caught his post-elimination press conference to learn more about his experience as one of the 2014 November 9. Right now, this moment, okay. what, what do you feel like? Uh, better than I thought, actually. I mean, uh, at the mor in the morning, I uh, I obviously hoped for more. Um, but, I mean, in the end, I finished the third in the World Series of Poker, so can't really complain. Yeah, feeling pretty good, actually. So. Do the realities of shorthanded tournament poker just make it that kind of dictate that there's going to be spots like that where you have to make make plays shorthanded that are kind of high variance? Like the last. Uh, I guess so, especially against like really good players. Uh, you can't wait patiently until you can exploit edges and uh, like smaller pots. So I guess I have to go with it there. Maybe not, but I don't know. It's, Definitely, you got to go with some of those spots. So, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the dynamic with Felix there in the last couple levels? It seemed like you guys were really going back and forth a lot, and just sort of what you were thinking during those times. Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was rooting for a, a spade in one hand. <laughs> uh, that was a pretty big pot. Um, I felt fairly comfortable playing hands against him. Uh, the only time I didn't really feel comfortable was when I put my glasses on, actually. <laughs> I never wear glasses in my life, so. but it was really hot. Uh, but that doesn't really have to do anything with the dynamic, or dynamic I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just enjoyed playing these guys. Both Felix and Martin are super good players from London, uh, as I am. And uh, we're gonna meet up, and the winner is going to pay uh, for my dinner. So, <laughs> yeah. why did you switch to the glasses? Sorry, why did you switch? To uh, the because like the lights felt much stronger today, so they were bothering me a little bit in my eyes actually. The so light, I, you, the lighting was different. Uh, it's how I perceived it. I, I was in a fifth uh, seat now, as opposed to the other day. So I don't know. I thought I'd put on the glasses. Maybe that helped. And I, don't know, I guess uh, I'm not gonna do that anymore. But. <laughs> I didn't, it's not like it affected my play too much. I would say over the last few months, you seem to be one of the players that really became really media friendly, I guess, and easy to talk to, and you played a lot of tournaments. Can we expect now to hopefully see you on more live tournament circuits? Oh, I appreciate that. Um, most likely, yeah. I mean, I'm already looking forward to uh, Master Classics of Poker that's in Amsterdam. I'm ambassador, they asked me. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun for sure. Uh, in Amsterdam, everybody come. Uh, and uh, also, I'm looking forward to next year World Series of Poker. Actually, I had some thoughts about that on the massage uh, massage table uh, this morning. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to play live more, for sure. Did the long day yesterday affect you today? Uh, somewhat, but uh, I mean, I don't think. I think it will affect everyone. I got six hours of sleep and I got a, my, my morning routine, I got it in uh, as I wanted to, so I felt quite good. Yeah. Well, what were you thinking about in the, in the lead up to this, uh, in the few hours before you came here, I mean, what you had in front of you? Uh, I was mostly enjoying my massage. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about your preparation? You seem to be one of the people who was really focused on uh, taking advantage of the fact that you could find out what everyone was doing <laughs> half an hour later. Can you talk about the people you work with and how you kind of use that information? Yeah, I think my reel definitely uh, deserves some points. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I talked with a bunch of buddies and they're all like different, uh, they have different specialties basically. Um, so I tried to use that as much to my advantage as I could. And I think I, uh, I gained a lot of information in a way that I thought was most helpful. So that dynamic in the game yeah, definitely gave me an edge, I think. Do you know, um, like, you know, how they were distilling all the information? I saw a great picture yesterday of, you know, some of your guys who've got, like, spreadsheets and you're coming, I mean, you know, how are they breaking it all down? Yeah, like, it's easy to get an information overload, so we really talked the process uh, through. Um, so, yeah, we had a spreadsheet and had a couple of guys discussing what to tell me, and then we had, like, one captain 
a good buddy of me and uh, he basically gave me the inf feed me the information whatever they thought was useful for me yeah. most of the tournament you were the chip, le chip leader that uh, today you were sh short on stack was it different to play yeah i prefer to be chip leader <laughs> uh, and it's a bit different as well like you have some different strategic options basically uh, being a chip leader uh, you have a bit more more options generally um, so you can utilize your stack uh, in a different way this is the first time there's been three Europeans who are the final three at the World Series of Poker um, can you talk about kind of the evolution of poker in Europe and, and where it stands now and what do you think this you know type of result means uh, yeah, I, to be honest I really I have no idea I mean I, maybe we have uh, like the Europeans have a small advantage because of online poker is still like widely available um, that's the only thing that I can come up with now uh, so I guess that makes us able to practice more so I, I hope you guys uh, like America gets poker back soon so we get to practice more as well basically you make a poker history for the Netherlands does it count right now obviously <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool and speaking of Dutch people they don't know how to party at all. From what I'm here, there's no partying in Holland. So what are you guys going to do here in Vegas? Oh, I mean, uh, I'm not flying home tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll definitely stay for a few more uh, days. Uh, it's my birthday, uh, the 15th. So I celebrate my birthday here as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't planned the party yet because I was hoping for uh, the suite. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'll, uh, I'll get something uh, fixed. It's still available. Soon. It's 10,000 a night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll consider it an option. Ha, ha, ha.